Can you speak a little bit about where you were pre-Granta in terms of your writing and what life was like pre-Granta for you? Because I know this year has been quite different in many ways. Um, I mean, my life hasn't been that different. Oh, good. I, 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 I do think, I think for, I was, the day that the sort of Granta issue was launched, um, I was shown to Jeanette Winterson, who'd been on the list in 93, mm -hmm. And she said, you know, it makes a huge, huge difference for writers who are perhaps have one book out or who are really at early stage. Mm -hmm. She said it's a really dramatic change. Um, I've had five out already. Um, so you're just, you know, slightly different sort of point and place. So it's been lovely. Um, I mean, and one of the really nice things about it was the day, because we didn't know beforehand who was on the list. Um, and when they, it was hilarious because they call you up to say, so a couple of months beforehand, three months or something, to say, you're on this list, it's top secret, you cannot tell anyone. In fact, they said, as I was on the phone to the editor, John Freeman, he said, are you at your computer? And I said, yeah. He said, we are emailing you right now a non-disclosure form. <laughs> Sign it and e scan it and email it back to me in the next five minutes. He obviously didn't trust me at all. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and then once you've done it, then put the original in the post and send it to us by tomorrow. Um, and, you know, then all these sort of dire things, you know, about how you mustn't tell anyone. So then you're terrified to tell anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and of course, you know, many of us who are writers, particularly a lot of us who live in London and see each other, would have run into each other. So you, any writer, you know, under 40, you just kept looking at them and wondering <laughs> um, and not being able to speak about it. So actually, the really weird part wasn't once the list came out. There was a very weird couple of months, because the grants of thing is a once in a decade and because everyone was aware of the dates when it was happening, it was a really strange period of time when you knew but you couldn't really talk about it and you were running on, into other writers. And then one day I ran to a friend of mine who's a writer, um, and it was about three weeks before they launched the, the list, and he said, congratulations, and I said, what? And he said, Grant, and I said, I said, what? And he started <laughs> laughing. He said, the thing all of you don't understand is, Every writer under 40 who isn't on the list is talking incessantly. <laughs> <laughs> and all of you who are answering the words, we won't figure it out. <laughs> you know? um, but it was a, a really nice day walking into the British Council offices when the, the day of the party, which was the first day we all saw each other. And there was a lot of sort of writers looking and saying, Oh, it's you. Oh, I was hoping you'd be here. And then a few sort of puzzles of who is that person in the corner? Um, but the nice part about that is, is that usually if you're on, you know, a short list or something like that, then you know everyone knows who's on the list and then there's always going to be one winner and it's all very sort of competitive and with this it's sort of the 20 um, and you know it's just the 20 of you and, and a lot of these events have been, I, mean, I haven't done a huge amount but it's it's very nice when you go around with other writers, um, like Sanjeev Sahota has one writer in here who I hadn't known before and we went Cape Town together. Yeah, we um, went to yeah. Thailand together. It's amazing. Yeah, love yeah. Thailand. So it, it's it's just it's been a nice thing in that way. There's a um, there's a sense sort of you know here we are in this nice thing together, um, which is which is very pleasant. Like yeah. a community now. You know, all these uh, <laughs> for, for me it's all bubble. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. first I don't like this literature yeah. gossip thing, mm. and I don't take seriously. Yeah. I live all my life in China, yeah. so until a few years ago. So I wrote most of my novels in China in Chinese until the last two novels I wrote in English yeah. when I moved here. So I never heard of Granta until mm -hmm. I won something in the Granta, and I didn't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And that why, if you are Chinese or Japanese, you lived all your life in the non-English empire, you don't know anything, apart from Beatles, <laughs> which is so uh, normal, so normal, like you never heard of it. In China, they really have this price of illusion, you know, mm -hmm. price. and I often find a bit irritated um, with this literature hype and philosophy, which has nothing to do with the bleak solitude, the right of life you led, which I think we're all, mm -hmm. all the right for in a way. Mm -hmm. We're 20 years old, we're publishing it, and it's all our life buried by the kitchen table writing um, <laughs> in a rented flat. Um, it's the opposite of that kind of champagne talk. So I actually get quite angry when, when talks on that, nothing to do with your work, you know, your imagination, all these chatty, chatty talks. So I actually think, um, I just Yeah, but thought, seeing that it does away. bring people to your books, right? Um, I mean, I, I know, I yeah, know I mean, people on the grant list they still don't read each other because they don't have time. No, I'm not talking about other writers, but I mean, I think one of the, the, the
complications of, of being a writer in, well, anywhere, I suppose, um, is you write, and you're writing in solitude, but you would like your books to be read. Um, and increasingly it's become true, and particularly as you things like Boston's are getting more centralized, or you have to pay to get your books, your publishers have to pay money to put you in those Boston's windows, or I think James Jones has now changed that rule. Um, that lists become the way that people get to hear about writers. Yeah, um, like a shop window. Yeah, right so, right so then I will be buried in this uh, shame and embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> what about other great writers? Because the thing right. is, yeah. I'm happy you buy yeah. the grant, or maybe one of my novels for yeah. my own interest. But I, again, I know so many desperate, disillusioned, mm -hmm. young of all the writers mm -hmm. never published book. Because mm -hmm. I'm always in this side of, if you're always on the edge, and then you, you know, you know, you know it's, what's the edge attitude, you, you cannot never enter the mainstream, say, the real commercial world. Even, I think this is a great presentation, but again, this is so, um, in a way, non-commercial, so really in the, Another in another world, you know, it, it's never, mm -hmm. and we are beating basically the whole monster, which is mm -hmm. commercial world. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really have this self-congratulating attitude, or whatever. I actually get bitter sometimes mm -hmm. and cynical. I say you can buy it, but do read it because I buy also, but I don't read it. Because I don't have time. Or yeah. I just I select some from the sixties or seventies from Europe. Sorry, that's that's you know all, all about yeah. apart from to live. Um, so it's very, I think it's a very tough um, situation like Boy Tonkin said in the independent. The writers nowadays has no such situation like Martin Emmett's time. Mm -hmm. There's a few writer only. Mm -hmm. um, now it's everywhere. I mean, really, people have no time to read fiction, especially. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really good point because, I mean, for me personally, doing my job, you expect me to be reading all the time. But actually, getting sent 20 novels and having to read them in two weeks, that was the first time I'd read that many novels for, for ages. And the one thing it made me do was kind of realise how um, invigorated still the novel form was in the 21st century. But like you say, when I got that pile of books, you all had code names, mm -hmm. you couldn't talk about you, yeah. you couldn't name you until a list had been announced. Um, but it was much who was missing from that pile of books, mm -hmm. as well as who was there. Mm -hmm. And you both said there's lots of people who you yeah. were included. So who were you surprised to see who was missed off the list, who didn't make it this time around? I mean, not for me. I don't live in the English, American mm -hmm. literature world. You know, I, and now I write in English because I live in it. Mm -hmm. But who can you say you met? Um, you can say in a small little London world, maybe. Yeah. And then can you say the whole world, the whole world? Mm -hmm. Other people who you really write, do you think other people should be But most, I mean, most great writers, they, you know, they, they, are, they, are, they are old or dying or from <laughs> last century, you know, because you, you, you always admire certain writers from the very old time. So you don't know, you don't have much knowledge from modern days like all your contemporaries. In a way, for me, I said, that's great, you know, for my next 10 years, I might study. But for now, I have to conquer a few lists which you know, 20 years ago I made a list, I want to read those people. <laughs> and you know, that's cruel, because yeah. you don't know what's your contemporary writing. And we have to be honest. Um, when you have family, when you have a job, when you try to survive, um, maybe you have 20 minutes a day. Yeah. Um, I don't have family or job, so I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so among those who, I mean, if we talk in terms of the young British novelists, which is British writers under 40 yeah. who should have been there, um, I was very disappointed Peter Hobbs wasn't. Right. I think he's a really fantastic writer. But of course, one of the other things that happened was, you know, I think it's, because a lot of people say, oh, why talk about those who are left off? I think it's really important to talk about those who are left off because it's a way of saying, actually, these are some fantastic writers as well. Um, so someone like Peter Hobbs, you know, whenever I do a grant event, including with Sigmund Rousing, who is the, you know, editor in chief of grant, I said, you know, Peter Hobbs should have been on the list. But I think those writers are beyond any prize or award. I mean, in a way, I think yeah, of course if, if they're, they're good, beyond, they're of course good. beyond the prize or award. If they are not good, but, they but the can't point, be there. No, no, but the point no. is that this makes a difference to who people know about. Not Maybe not the grant list, but something like the orange list. Right, those right. lists make such a difference to who, whether people know to go and pick up a book by Peter Hobbs. It doesn't make Peter Hobbs a better or worse writer. Um, but if you're no longer relying, reviews no longer make a difference in the way they used to. The bookshops are no longer lots of independent bookshops where every 
independent bookseller is saying, here are wonderful books, let's put them on display. It's, instead, it's publishers who are you going to pay us money to put something on the front. So then how do those books get attention? And it matters that those books get attention. And the prizes are away, the lists are away, and people like Jowli and me sitting up here and saying, read Peter Hobbs, mm. is a way to say to people, these are the really good writers, and you should be reading them, and the lists do that. So it's about awareness. It's, and it sucks. Yeah. You know, because it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be dependent on the editors of Granta or the judges of the Orange Shortlist. But increasingly, it re these kind of things make all the difference, which makes them much more pressurized, um, which means being left off them is more unpleasant. You know, so I mean, there is a lot around it that is to do with this commercialization um, that is sort of really unpleasant the more important it gets. So as writers, and there's a lot of, of writers in this room tonight, I know, in the contemporary, can you write in that kind of blessed isolation, not giving a damn about the rest of the world, or do you always write with one ear to, I, I need to be, I'd like to be part of this list, I'd like to win prize, and I'd like to write like this. But, the, but I think we take this yeah. too serious. I mean, right. you write yeah. what you love to yeah. write. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, whether yeah. you know Grant or not, whether yeah. you're English or British yeah. or, like me, pretending, <laughs> because most of nowadays British is come from the other world, yeah. Yeah. and then we end up in the city, and then we end up making family, and then because of the job and that. So you write because there's certain pain or certain anger or certain mm -hmm. yeah. craziness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You don't care this. You care in a secondary degree when you're aware you need to exchange some income from them. Mm -hmm. but, but if you write those, but even Stephen King, when you read his biography. Uh, he starts to write personally without any conscience of this and that could be in my mm -hmm. And then he deliberates the making of the movie. So I think take this too serious. Let's talk about literature. <laughs> More broadly. When you write, I mean, you know, Jonathan, when you're writing, this stuff is one to book it out and you're taking that term of crazy position. But when when you write, if you don't write from that craziness or that anger or that passion, then it's going to show in the work. And you write from experience. Well, you don't have to experience. You have to write from your wounds, I think. You know, the experience which you have to write from your And so you've both chosen the novel to do that for these particular stories, these particular narratives. And we I never mean, choose. I will never choose novels. Really? I know as it's absolutely commodity. <coughs> in China, we don't have novel form and we can't get to a talk. So when one says, oh, in the West, the novel is only published in the talk, mm -hmm. which means uh, something like book from a different quality in the book in the band. Because in general, all the literature is published, either sequel or short story in the mm -hmm. statement. So we have millions of statements in which serious literature can go. But nowadays, because of commercialization, one name, should I have the one name format and like this? So you buy up product with a handle or a If I could choose, I would choose write an essay or poetry. Right. So the essay poetry could be le less in time, and you don't need one thing. You, you need a 20 page or maybe like a two page of poem. Because that's like a high level of literature. So I always say in China now we call it a little talk, it's trivial, trivial talk. But we end up being like I know it. Because that's the now the perfect so called perfect format to deliver your idea, an uh, idea format. But we don't have to have two hundred page or four hundred page. It's crazy um, all these formats and the narrative art for that talk. I love the moment. Um, I love the novel because we're friends actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 I'm yes. 